Hello, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Pastor Nick V. I wanted to talk about him because this confirms a topic and a point we bring up a lot on the rest of this channel, and a point that many others bring up on their channels also. And that is that this guy is positive in spite of God, not because of God. His optimism is his. He's optimistic in spite of the nightmare torture scape that exists around us and in terms of his life experience. Now, you'll notice he'll do these videos and these talks about how nothing is impossible with God and all these other types of things. And to talk about how his back was healed and all these other types of things and his heart was healed. And But it's like, okay, great, awesome. It's great that you were healed. It's great that healing occurred. For sure. But the impossible factor is quite obvious here. It's obviously impossible for this being to ever bring itself to grow anyone's limb back. So either it doesn't have the power to do so, or it doesn't have the will to do so. And the will to do so and the power to do so are impossible. Or let's put it this way. It's so close to impossible, it may as well be impossible. This is where the redundancy principles kick back in. So when we talk about redundancy principles, it means something that may as well be something else because there's so little significant difference. So let's say hypothetically that a being does exist that in some way, shape or form cares about this guy. Okay. On some deep visceral level. All right. Just for the sake of discussion. Okay, let's just say a, a very powerful being exists that, that cares about this guy. Obviously, this very powerful being that exists that cares about this guy doesn't care that much if, and is not that powerful because obviously he can't grow the guy's limbs back or he doesn't want to. Even though this guy has actually prayed for limbs and wants limbs, desires limbs, would love to have limbs, and actually he'd make the world a much better place with limbs also. In many ways, he'd be able to make the world a much better place. He's inspiring people right now. He's encouraging people. That's great. But if his narrative was that he's positive in spite of this God being behind the nightmare torture scape that is reality, he would actually be far more accurately on track. And he would actually be teaching what is true and correct and accurate. That rebellion against the thing as is, that's behind reality as is, eternal rebellion against that thing is, in fact, the action, the activity that is sacred, uplifting, positive, worth pursuing, pleasure-filled. Okay? You have to oppose reality as is, not serve it or worship it or praise it. Reality as is is torturous. Reality as is is miserable. Reality as is is horrifying. It's the things humans do for each other and with each other that have the potential to be benevolent, helpful things. Outside of that, there's nothing benevolent at all. It's a world out to kill us all the time. There's very few things animals do to help us under any circumstances. And amongst animals, there's only a very few species that can even do anything to help us, even slightly. Such as dogs and cats, and the amount they can help us is very fucking minimal. Not much. There's not much they can do, and there's not much they're aware of compared to humans in terms of actually being able to heal other people or save them. So it's amazing to me how people in this situation, instead of adopting a narrative that to go, so what he could do is he could actually go on these tours, on these talks, on these discussions, and tell everybody hey, we need to all rebel together in positivity and optimism against reality as is, imposed on us, and inspire people in that way. Look, I'm in this situation and I'm still inspired to kick ass against reality as is, and whatever thing is behind fucking everything up like this. And will you join me in this? Can you help me in this? Fuck yeah! And he'd actually inspire way more people outside of just Christianity with that message. He'd inspire... um Everybody everywhere, in fact. And in fact, the lie that is Christianity would fall apart and fall to pieces, just like the lie that is Islam and the lie that is Yahudism. Uh, the belief system of Yahudism, Judaism, etc. So, 
he would be actually accurately informing people of reality if he were to do that. Man, I, I just, I wonder if he'll ever realize this. That he's positive and optimistic in spite of God instead of because of God. I wonder if he'll ever just take the credit for himself ever under any circumstances. Because that's where the credit is actually due. One of the darkest things about this demiurgic theme is that this demiurgic entity, force, psychology, etc., whatever it is, it always likes to suck the credit out of every individual and claim the credit for itself. Instead of letting you have the fucking credit. Ever. Under any circumstances. It's always itself that has to have the credit, or the greater glory. Even though it'll never give a single person their limb back. So, so he's got these messages, like, you are not ugly. That's a great positive uplifting message. I actually agree with that. Ugliness only exists in people who have horrible attitudes and are nasty towards people. But people in general, no matter what they look like, I would never say they're ugly, and I don't think that. People who have a will or an intent to overall be as kind as they possibly can, as their drive, I don't consider those people ugly. So that's a positive message. But it's a message in spite of this ugly thing behind reality versus in spite of it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to see what you have to say about this topic. And please don't give me any spiel about Oh, how deeper reality is beyond the concepts of good and evil. Just shut the fuck up with that, please. That's so stupid. It's, it's an irrelevancy. It's like, okay, a ball rolling on the floor is beyond the concept of good and evil. It doesn't mean anything. We're talking about tangible reality that stuff needs to be done about. We're talking about torture needing to be ended and prevented. We're not talking about just something rolling on the fucking floor. Okay. That's literally the equivalent. Oh, but deeper reality, but transcendence, but transcendence. And your point is what? Transcendence. Ooh, googly gaga, transcendence. Yay. No, that's not how this works. Transcendence doesn't mean anything because it doesn't prevent torture. It has no significance, whether it's there or not. It's a redundancy, you see, because it doesn't prevent the horrors. It doesn't give this guy his limbs. So it's useless. Oh, but, 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 but transcendence, but trans, just shut up. Stop. I'm beyond familiar with the transcendent narrative and it's not good enough. It's a redundancy. It doesn't solve anything. It doesn't prevent these things from happening to these guys. This guy does not deserve to have limbs missing. He deserves limbs more than a large number of people on the fucking planet. It's quite obvious that this dude is a pretty chill overall kind, laid-back guy. And he kind of has to be because he doesn't have limbs, for fuck's sake. I mean, you can't really be an asshole that treats people like crap and expect to live very long with no limbs. I mean, just use your brain, obviously. He's obviously still around to some degree because others like having him around to various degrees, obviously. Because he actually smiles and shows that he cares about people, so other human beings want to help him. Naturally. Right? So... And if he had limbs, I would assume his character would be very similar to what it is now. More than likely. I don't, I don't see any trace of this guy, especially after living this long without arms and legs, that he would just, oh, you know what, I'm just going to become a psycho killer today now that I have arms and legs. I, I don't see that happening in the guy's case like this, if he were given limbs. He would probably be more optimistic than he ever was before. Because he has something that he never had before. Jesus cares for the widow. See, that's the thing. Jesus so-called cares for the widow, but Jesus never grows limbs back, though. And he never prevents limbs from being removed. So there, there isn't that much care. The care... And even if there is care, it doesn't do anything. That's... Okay, folks, this is what I keep trying to get across to Christians right, left, and center. It's like, if someone feels care, but it doesn't do anything to prevent physical real-world problems, it doesn't mean much of anything. Okay, I can care about anybody anywhere. I care about somebody that I've never met. Okay, I care about them. There's a sense of care in me. I care that a kid doesn't starve to death. 
but am I able to do much about it to actually actively prevent it? No. So the care doesn't really mean much of anything. I care about my uh, brother right now, who's a handful of miles away from me. Can I feed him right now? Am I able to directly hand him money for free right now? Just there it is. Bloom. Plop. Am I able to shower him with a million dollars? No. Am I able to prevent him from growing old and dying? No. Okay, I care about him. Cool. But what does it do? It doesn't do anything until you do something with the care. You see what I'm saying? So having this invisible floaty boaty being who floats around and cares about us within our hearts. Okay, great. Warm, fuzzy feeling inside, but it doesn't do anything. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, but the warm, cuddly feeling is it. That feeling itself is so much. That is the deeper reality. Give me a fucking break. Yes, warm, cuddly feeling should be an aspect of deeper reality. It should remain so. And of course it is an aspect of any paradise state. Of course it is. It's a huge factor in a paradise state. Or something as close to that as possible. But is it actually by itself the transcendence, the deeper reality, the significant? No. It can't just be the worm cuddly feeling inside. It has to be actual, okay, no torture happening. People not losing limbs. Or at the very least, at the very least, if people are able to lose limbs, have them automatically grow back. Like axolotl salamanders. Have them grow back. Have internal organs grow back. At the very least, we could have that happening. Even if we're not able to prevent them from being lost in the first place. Something. Something. More in the direction of that. So unstop. See, what's sad to me about this is like, I'm looking at this guy's situation and there's so much, there's so much that this demiurgic fucking thing is sucking from this guy in terms of credit, in terms of praise, in terms of glory and all this other type of stuff that it doesn't deserve. And many might say, oh, because he's probably making a shit ton of money off of this. Tons of people are donating tons of money to him. And so he's just doing it for the cloud and for that or whatever. The Put it this way. If, if a guy's in this situation, it's irrelevant to me why he's doing this in terms of whether he's doing it to make money or actually is wants to inspire people or not. Whether he sincerely believes this or not, he has every good reason to set himself up for making passive income easily in this fucking type of a situation. So even if that wasn't sincere, I'd still be fine with him doing this. Because at least it's something to buffer against the horror of him not having limbs. You know, at least he's got a, a good looking wife, you know, who he's able to have intimacy with. So that's good. You know, it's a lot better than not having that, you know. So, and then, you know, antenatalists, a lot of you may go on about, well, oh, look, the fact he has kids and stuff. That's so secondary compared to, like, the deeper, more significant point here. Yes, it would be more mature of him to have not had the kids and brought them into this world, but here they are now. So treat them well and have a positive perspective towards them. There are other living beings that exist now. There they are. Okay? So they're to be appreciated and respected. Here they are. Here they exist. Okay? So what he chose to do in the past, whatever. It's, it's, it's done. He already did it. Okay? So get over it. Man with low limbs makes progress towards driving a car. So it's like, cool. But the thing is, God, the God thing, won't give him his fucking arms or legs back. So the God thing is useless. This guy's doing all this stuff himself. Other humans built this car. Other humans set up this thing that he's using here. Other humans built this. God didn't build any of this shit. Okay. Other humans are facilitating this guy and helping take care of him. And it's impressive that what he's able to do with, without limbs. Humans are actually impressive beings in terms of what we're able to achieve with so many fucking limitations. It's quite impressive what we can pull off with all the fucking limitations thrown on us, especially in this guy's case. You know? So if I were to talk to this guy, I would just be like, dude... It's great you're going around inspiring people and stuff, 
And if you genuinely believe what you're saying to these people, have at it, you know? But I would say to him, I was like, but please understand from my perspective, and I'm just seeing this very clearly, that you're positive in spite of this thing, not because of this thing. This is you that's the positive one, the inspirational one. And if you adopt that philosophy, I think you'll actually be even more inspired, even a happier person, even better off than you are now. And you'll be able to inspire a shit ton more people too, because they'll be able to align with that narrative because it's more aligned with what's actually true. You've got the positive positivity in you in spite of the hellscape we're surrounded by, not because of it. I've got it in me in spite of it, not because of it. Okay? This shit ain't on our side. It's not here to be cozy and cuddly for us. It's not here to help us or show us love or affection. It's a fucked up, twisted, warped thing we're surrounded by. And it has to be opposed, not worshipped or praised or glorified or any of this other type of stuff. Okay? So there you have it, folks. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And please be as optimistic and as positive as you possibly can be while recognizing the grounded truth, the grounded reality of imposed reality being distinct from desired idealized reality and why desired idealized reality is eternally at war with imposed reality forever. Not just now, not just in this realm, not just currently, forever. We have to oppose imposed reality to ensure that desired, idealized reality is the reality we experience. Are the realities plural we experience? So please help me in this endeavor, in this eternal war against all things imposed that induce torment and agony so that we may fill reality with maximal pleasure and forever maintain against even the potentiality of torture and misery in all its forms. And with that, I will talk to you soon. Perpetual Pleasure is signing out and plunging in. Have a good one.